Every once in a while in your life, you will encounter some people who are triggered by you. And uh, you personally don't mean them, you know, like it's a different story when you actively engage in, you know, like pissing other people off. But uh, regardless of your best intentions, other people will sometimes or oftentimes be disappointed in you and uh, be triggered by you and such. Now, this especially has the tendency to happen more when you change your personality. So suppose you used to have a very receptive and kind of a submissive kind of a role in a relationship. And when you try to take more ownership of your life and you want to be your own person, as a side effect, when you become your own person, that role that other people are used to uh, is going to be disappointed, right? So of course, they have all the right in their world to be pissed at you and be triggered and upset by you. But um, when you're on the path of, when you're on the beginning of the path to changing your personality and becoming your own person without you know overly emotionally relying on other people and such, right? Then it is very tempting for you to be like, wait, am I fucking up? Should I not be doing this, you know, walking this path of life? Should I just go back to the life that I know? And uh, this video, this video is more to explain um, how to deal with other people being upset at you. So, in terms of human behavior, there's a lot of different things that we can do. So, as the actor of our actions, we have kind of an infinite degree of what we can do. And also, when we interpret other people's actions, and when we experience the things that other people do unto us, there is, again, an infinite range of possibilities of how we can interpret it. So the thing to keep in mind first is that you're not always going to be understood, and that's okay. It's by design, right? But at the same time, we don't want... So the Buddhism middle way kind of a thing is this. We don't need to be 100% understood. But at the same time, this doesn't mean just give up on communicating because you're not going to be 100% understood anyway. You're fine to elaborate. You're fine to explain why you acted a certain way and how you're doing. But even if other people don't understand it, it's okay. And other people may, in fact, they may be more upset at you because you're explaining the situation. But you know what? It's okay because you're not really doing harm. But there are cases where there is something like a harm, right? So while this is not the absolute kind of a guideline in terms of human behavior, Buddha provided basically five things that we should probably refrain from because it's very prone to create suffering, right? And it's don't kill or do you know physical harm onto things, right? Uh, because when I get hurt, I get upset. So that means when I hurt another person, they are likely to be upset at me. Uh, similarly, uh, don't take property from other people when it's not yours. Because when someone steals your property, it's very easy for you to suffer, right? And the third, uh, don't actively engage in verbal abuse or lie to people. Basically, don't use your words to hurt other people. Uh, Number four, don't get drunk to the point of intoxication. And number five, uh, don't uh, sexually harass people against their will. So these are like the five guidelines around, um, you know, is this, you know, good behavior or is this harmful behavior? And now the, that's basically Buddha's guideline. But depending on your religion, you may also have guidelines of whether you engaged in harm or not. And now uh, the legal system also has standards on whether something is considered a breach of the law or not, right? So as long as you are fine um, in the various standards that you can apply for yourself, as long as you're assured that you are, you know, not harming people, you're okay. And you know what? Other people are free to interpret whatever you do in the way that way, in the way that they want. It's okay. It's not a problem right? There's no reason for you to change course just because someone is upset at you. Now, I think this is where this gets a little bit tricky is, um, suppose you communicate with 
you know, other people were using words. And then um, they get upset by the things that you say. So uh, one of the five Buddha's guidelines is don't use words to hurt other people, right? Okay, so this is where it gets tricky because I, from my perspective, it can not be harmful words. But from another person, it can be a harmful word. It, it can be a harmful word, right? So, for example, like uh, it, when I was young, when I was growing up, the word, you know, like the, you know, homo calling homosexuals like the F word, it was very, very common. And uh, when something wasn't like, you know, uh, when something was stupid, people used to say, oh, that's so gay, right? And uh, the R word and uh, all these other words, right? That when I was growing up, it was kind of like, kind of thrown around everywhere. But over time, um, this is what like uh, opponents of this called wokeism. Uh, we have more and words, more and more words that we can't use. But it's not that we can't use them because it's of a language police or anything. It's just that those words are harmful to the groups that it affects, right? So um, because of that, suppose I used one of those words. Suppose I used like a slur without me knowing, right? Okay, so from my intent, I don't have the I don't have the intent to hurt this person with a slur. But from the receiving end, it's totally possible to receive it as an offensive slur, right? But the thing is, when I don't know, I don't know. I can't blame myself for not knowing, right? So whatever we did out of ignorance, we have to give ourselves the leniency and the mercy to kind of use that as a learning opportunity because we could feel bad about that. But by feeling excessively bad about that, by basically over the degree of, oh, now I see. That must have been a very painful experience. Mm, yeah, okay. So I should be more conscious of these things. So aside from that, ah, oh, but why did I, ah, oh, stupid me, why did I say that? That really doesn't help anybody, right? It's more about your self-centered kind of a suffering. And uh, it doesn't help the people affected by the language, it just hurts you. So whatever uh, we, we did out of ignorance, we have to be a, uh, willing to give ourselves some leniency and understand that, hey, I didn't know, but I do know now. And uh, I have to keep it in mind. And again, we so far we talked about cases where we didn't really intend no harm, but other people did. And th there will be times where you actually did engage in harm, right? There have, will be times where you uh, actually get lose control of your temper, and then you actually do show someone. And uh, you actually do call someone by a name and you actually lash out at them and you actually get intoxicated and you touch someone, right? These things can happen, but when these things happen, then you have to recognize that you are in a place of needing to repent. You are in a place of needing to reflect upon your behavior so that you can course correct in the future, right? The more we deflect and the more we become defensive about things and the more we become like la 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 okay okay i did better oh and the more we engage in that the more difficult it is to sit with the gravity of the actions that we did right and the more we sit with the gravity of the actions the more we come to understand from other people's perspective how that experience might have been and it, that kind of a vicarious experience of the harm that other people have suffered that is i think at the essence of uh course correcting your uh, actions because in the end most of these misunderstandings happen because we live in our heads we live our lives right and we generally don't know what's going on in other people's lives but when we are able to sufficiently put ourselves in other people's shoes then we get to understand, oh, so this is what it feels like, right? And so, for example, um, you might be, someone may be uh, fired and then they have a really tough time, you know, finding a job. And then you're like, oh, why are they so lazy? Like, can't they just apply to places? Like, why are they not submitting a re their resumes or everything? And then, you know, a few months later, I get fired. And turns out, uh, no one's really accepting resumes right now. There's a hiring freeze and, um, you know, uh, 
also with the emotional impact of getting fired there's like a lot of devastation and the, it's really hard to get yourself to act and at that point you realize oh, i misjudged the situation because i was living in my head oh man oh i can't so i can't speak so easily about other people's experiences and that kind of a vicarious experience of other people's um you know what they're going through is uh, the catalyst for a kind of change um, so that you don't kind of repeat those actions. So more, most important uh, overarching theme here is you, the flexibility of mind. You can be wrong, I could be right, I can be wrong, you can be right. Both of those can be true at the same time, but I'm, I am in control of my life only, right? So depending on what the accusation is, did I do something that you know warrants changing of actions in the future or a repentance of the things that happened in the past? If so, good, we can do that. If not, too bad you feel bad about that, but there's nothing I can do about it, right? So suppose someone is uh, upset at watching this video, but I'm making it with the intent so that you can help yourself in the case where other people are triggered at you. But if you find offense in this video, like there's nothing I can do because I don't know what's causing this. We can have a civil discussion. You can tell me about why, what part was offensive. And if there's something I can learn from that experience, then I can be okay with it, right? I can course correct or I can apologize. But if I learned, we, we sufficiently communicated from both of our perspectives and then we just see, we, we both can see, oh, we're just looking at different things, right? We're just not seeing eye to eye. And unless one of us changes, it's impossible for us to see. We don't have the responsibility to change for anyone. It's your life. And at that point, you can decide to be like, okay, let's agree to disagree. And that is, again, a perfectly fine way to be. We don't need... Peace doesn't require everyone to be seeing eye to eye. Peace can coexist with a lot of differences. So uh, hope this helps. And uh, when you are having communication troubles, it's so important to communicate which is really hard, right? Because communication is what brought you to this kind of a pickle kind of a situation in the first place. But again, because these ha things happen because people don't see eye to eye. And the more people see eye to eye, the less likely these things are likely to happen. Again, you don't need to be understood. You don't need to completely understand another person, but it's always, I think, worth a few tries.